Example 159.2 Tech. Nutrition researchers are interested in the effects of two antioxidant supplements, A and B, on the longevity of rats. The response variable lifespan is measured in years. A group of 36 rats were divided evenly and randomly into nine groups. The supplements A and B were provided at three different dose levels, high, low, and none. Use the various SPSS outputs below to answer the questions that follow. Okay, so let's take a look at those questions and see what we can do with those. All right, so the first question says identify the factors and levels for this experiment. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so the factors were supplement A and B, and the levels for those factors are basically none of the factor, a low amount of it, and a high amount of it. And that's the same for both, right? No B, low B, high B. Okay, so as far as the factors go, it's pretty easy. There are A factors at three different levels, none, I'll just say no, and then there's low, and then there's high, right? Just abbreviated there. And it's the same for B. For factor B, it's level no, level low, and level high. Those are the options. All right, let's look at question B. It says this two-factor factorial experiment can also be referred to as a three by three. Where does the three by three come from? So again, it comes from those factor levels. You have three levels for factor A, and you have three levels for factor B. So because we have three levels for the two factors, that's why it's called a three by three experiment. Give an example of a treatment for this experiment. How many different treatments are there? So an example of a treatment is pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna put the answer up here. You could have, for example, no A and no B. That would actually be a treatment in this study, right? A rat that gets neither of the two supplements. And then of course there would be no A and low B and no A and high B, so on and so forth. So how many different combinations like that can you create? Well, basically nine, right? That's where the three by three comes in. Three times three is nine. There are nine different possible treatments. So the answer to this one is that there are nine treatments, right? Nine treatments are possible. All right, let's look at D. This is how many replications were used for this experiment. Why is it necessary to have more than one? So if you remember when we read this, it said that there were 36 rats being divided up into the different treatments equally. And since we just said there were nine treatments, that would have to be four replications. In other words, there should be four measurements for every treatment. So I'll say four reps. We'll confirm that in a moment. But why is it necessary to have more than one? Remember, that's where our error comes in for our experiment, right? We would have no sum of square for error without those replications. So let's take a look at the, the table to show the four reps. And before I leave, I'll just say that, again, we need the sum of square for error. That's why we have replications. Sum of square for error is converted into the mean square for error, and that's what we use to come up with our test statistics. So I'm just going to say we need an MSE. Without those replications, we'd have no MSE. Let's scroll up, though, and take a look at the table of data. You can see here that for each treatment combination, right, no A, no B, there's one, two, three, four measurements. So there's the replications that we were talking about. Okay, let's look at part E or question E. It says, what does the plot of the marginal means indicate? Let's take a look at that plot. Okay, so this plot is a little bit uh, interesting, but it appears that there might be an interaction effect. You see how these look like they're about to intersect, perhaps? That might be indicating an interaction effect. In other words, these lines should be kind of parallel, right? And so this is, looks like it's about to intersect. This is also doing something kind of strange here with a bend. It's going sort of the opposite direction of this one. So if we saw all three of these lines kind of sloping in the same direction, all parallel to one another, it would indicate no interaction effect. I think here we might be seeing an interaction effect. So aside from that, it's kind of hard to tell anything else because whenever there is an interaction effect, uh, things get more difficult to see visually. So it's kind of that you once you identify the interaction effect, it's best maybe to then look at all the possible different combinations of factor levels, or in other words, look at the different treatments to see which ones are significantly different from the others. So I will kind of refrain from saying anything more about this marginal plot, except for the fact that there might be an interaction effect. Okay, so again, for party, e, it looks like there's an interaction effect. All right, for part F, it says complete the missing parts of the ANOVA table above. So it looks like we're missing this sum of squares. We can get that by subtraction. Remember, all these sum of squares have to add up to the total sum of squares. So we'll have 7.299 minus 2.474 minus 4.217 minus 0.39. And we get the answer 0 0.218. All right, let's do the degrees of freedom. For factor A, there were three levels, so take away one, you get two. For factor B, there were three levels, take away one, you get two. For the A-B interaction, you multiply the two degrees of freedom for the factors above, so two times two will give you four. 
Uh, for the corrected total or for the total degrees of freedom, remember that they said we had 36 subjects, right? If you take one away from the 36 subjects, you end up with 35. Or you can remember we had nine treatments and there were four replications, so that makes 36 as well. Take away one, you get 35. All right, and then these degrees of freedom should all add up to 35, so we'll use subtraction to get the missing one. If you take away six from 35, you're left with 29. All right, so let's get the mean square for each of these sum of squares. So we'll basically be dividing by two here in the first two, then divide by four, so on and so forth, right? So we're dividing the sum of squares by the corresponding degrees of freedom. So 2.474 divided by 2, 1.237, and then 4.217 divided by 2, you get 2.1085, and then we'll do 0.218 divided by 4, and you get 0 0.0545. Then lastly, we have 0 0.390 divided by 29. You get 0 0.0134. That value I'm going to store in my calculator. So I'll store it again under the variable x so I can reuse it quickly. All right, let's get the test stat for factor b and the interaction effect. The way we're going to do this, we're going to divide the MSE into each of these, right? All right, so 2.108. 5 divided by that MSE, and you get 156.786. And then we'll do the same. We'll get uh, 0 0.0545 and divide it by that same MSE, and you get 4.053. Okay, so we can see here that this significance level is pretty small. It's small enough to assume there's an interaction effect. Okay, so we completed the ANOVA table, and now we're looking at question G. It says, what is the p-value for the F-test statistic related to the interaction effect? At the 5% significance level, what should we conclude about the interaction effect? So remember that the p-value was given here, and it was 0 0.015. So 0 0.015, and then because of that, we should include there is an interaction effect. So we're gonna say there does seem to be an interaction effect because that 0 0.015 is less than 5%, so it means we reject the null hypothesis that there is no interaction effect, and we conclude that there is an interaction effect. All right, for part H, it says, based on the results of the test for an interaction effect, is it appropriate to test for main effects? We're going to say no here because there appears to be an interaction effect. There seems to be an interaction effect. So we won't bother to test for the main effects in this case. All right, and then we have these two pieces, I and J, which are basically optional. But I have included SPS output if you wanted to look at those. So it says at the 5% significance level, use the multiple comparison output below to determine if rats receiving a high dose of supplement B live significantly longer with a high or low dose of supplement A. So they're saying that if you take rats that are receiving the high dose of sub B, how does that pair up or interact with a higher low dose of supplement A? So let's take a look at the output and see if we can make sense of that. So this table is pretty complicated to read, but basically you can see here that we have factor B and the level high. And it said if you had factor B at a high level, do you live longer with factor A at a high or low level if you're a rat? So here's that comparison, high and low comparison, given that you're taking factor B at a high level. And that comparison produces an interval here that has entirely positive limits. That means that you live significantly longer if you have a high dose of A, since the high dose is the first mean in this comparison. Remember, whenever the interval is entirely positive, the first mean is significantly different. So we would conclude here that you live longer with a high dose of A. So the answer here is better to have a high dose, right? All right, so let's look at J. It says at a 5% significance level, use the multiple comparison output below to determine if rats receiving a high dose of supplement A live significantly longer without B supplementation or with a low dose of B. So they're saying if you have a high dose of A, would you be better off with low dose B or no B? Let's try to find that comparison here. 
All right, we're coming to the second pairwise comparison table because that's where you have the comparisons with A, and here's A at a high level. And we wanted to compare that to either no B or low B. So no low comparison is done here, low and no. It's also done here and here, but that's the same result. So we don't need to look at those in different places. If we look at this comparison, low B to no B, it's this interval here, and you can see that it's entirely positive, again, meaning that the first mean produces a significantly longer life than the second one. In this case, it would be a low dose of B is better off than no B. So A at a high level and B at a low level is better than A at a high level and B at no level. So of course, the answer then for our question is that take B at the low level. All right, so our last answer to this is that B at a low level is better. So B at a low dose is better. Then no B, assuming that the rat has a high level of A. I and J are just giving you a feel for how you would analyze that multiple comparison table for the interaction effect. It's pretty complicated though, and there's a lot of comparisons to look at. And there's also a lot of replication in the way that SPSS produces that table, so all those replications are a little annoying to read. But essentially, you could go one by one and determine these things. You can see which factor levels interact in which ways, and you can decide what the best recommendations are in each case just like we did for the examples in I and J.